So we're gonna do something that not a lot of people even know is possible. We're gonna take this little IC chip. It's just a little chip that's gonna identify one LED. And that LED happens to be this demon eye. So this demonite, the way that it's gonna work is I'm gonna mount it inside of this projector so that it works just like that. And the only way that that's gonna work to be able to power a demon eye from the same LED wires. So we're gonna tap into the existing wires from the addressable. We've got this flow series strip from Lighting Trends and it has three wires coming in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hack into those wires. I'm gonna cut the wires right there and then I'm going to install them to the front side and the back side of this little IC chip. So it's gonna come into the chip straight from the controller. It's gonna hit the front side of the chip, power up this demon eye, and then it's gonna come out of the back side of the chip and then follow down here and hit the light. So what that means is that on the chain of LEDs, there's 66 LEDs on this big C bar, and this is gonna become 67. But instead of it going at the end, it's gonna become LED number one. So there'll be pixel number one, and then pixel number two in the corner here, and it wraps around and ends on pixel 67 here. So we're just basically adding one LED into the mix, but that's giving us the effect right there, where the color that that turns first will then hop over to here, and it wraps around. So you can get fancy with offsets and stuff like that. All I care right now is the fact that I have existing wiring right here that I wanna cut into, and I wanna add this new LED into the mix, all right? There's nothing wrong. This is totally good to go. It's 66 LEDs right now, but there would be no demon eye if I don't tap it into the system right here. Cut this, strip the wires, and then we're gonna solder everything up and get it ready here, test it, and in the video after that, I will mount this demon eye under the lens there and we'll test everything out before we seal it up. And then I'll get the seal of this light and have them all ready to go. All right, step one, I'm gonna cut these wires. Now I'm gonna take the scissors and cut the heat shrink back just a bit so we can have a little bit of wiring to work with here. And a lot of times what I'll do is after I cut this stuff because it wants to keep falling apart into tiny little pieces, I'll actually hit it with the heat gun to make sure that it's not gonna be leaving little tiny pieces of plastic inside the light. Got that there, I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun now. Now I'm gonna strip and tin these wires really quick. We don't need much wires, just enough to solder onto the boards here. You would think that I would get a bigger piece of solder, huh? <laughs> don't do what I'm doing, but you know, you get it. Come on, suck it up there, buddy. All right, so now we want the one on this side is what we're going to solder on first so this should say five volts there there's our five volt next is our data wire and our ground okay so that's this side now on the opposite side. Each side has its own function. Yeah, so this is the outside. We just did the in. So what happens is if we didn't do this part right here, then the demon eye would be pixel number one and then nothing else would get power. But because we want it to go from pixel one over to pixel two, we have to solder in this. So this basically is the thing that connects the demon eye to the LED strip. So there you have power, ground, and data, right? Yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. Ground is black, power is red, and data in this case is white. But sometimes the color for data changes. I mean, actually, color for these wires change all the time, so it's just important to know which function each wire does, as opposed to just assuming that red means power. I've seen red for data, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so now we're gonna plug this thing in and test to make sure that our connection is good to go. 
And what should happen is this should turn the same color as the projector on that side. But I might not have the program dialed for 67 LEDs. So what we might see is that this LED right here might not light up off the bat. There we go. So this is how it should look. Sure enough, we're good. And I'm gonna check the program really quick. Make sure that we've got all of our LEDs in the system. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say, this is the left headlight right there. The weird thing is that should actually have an extra LED to it. So let's see, does that change anything on this side? So these are actually plugged in backwards. The way that I have it on the right side is I have 66. Oh, there it is. So both of them were down one. So now it's 67 on the right and 67 on the left. We are all good to go. And we can test out a couple different animations. White Dazzle, this makes it really dim, but you can see it is lit up nice and dim. And the cool thing is next step is gonna be taking this LED and just installing it into the projector like this and then it can tap into the system here just with these little JST connectors. How do you test to make sure that the LED is putting the right color? A super important one is if you've got something that's just doing solid colors, you wanna to try to match those up. So I have this as the strobe setting. There's different ones, but like popcorn would be terrible, right? Because you never see one color everywhere else, or you could go to solid and you can actually change any of these colors, but you get the idea with that. Like if I go to strobe now, that was crazy. I don't know why it wasn't doing it that cool earlier, but solid's a good one. I'll just kind of pan through everything. That's a good way. Now, if you have anything wrong, if you have red, green, or blue in the wrong order in your connection, when it's soldered up to this little board right here, you'll know, especially if you put it on something like solid, because it won't match this, it'll turn let's say red when everything else is green, then you've got to swap some wires around. Every LED has different wiring order. Color of the wires does not have a whole lot to do with it. So in this case, I believe red is actually the white wire. And then I want to say blue is green, red, I don't know. Red is blue, it, oh, actually red is nothing. Look, we're not even using red. So <laughs> black is the only one that I know is power. The other three are just in some random order, but we got it. So we're good to go now. We can install the Demon Eye. All right, well, every projector is slightly different, but this one is particularly easy to work with because all I have to do is take out four screws and then this front lens is gonna come off. It's gonna give me access to top of the projector where I can mount this Demon Eye using nothing but some aluminum tape and some double-sided foam tape. Hold on to make sure it doesn't fall off. So that I'm gonna set to the side and now I've got our projector. So the way that I've seen this particular setup work is if I try to put the, so if I try to put this thing too far forward, it's gonna be very visible from outside of the projector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it to where it's aiming down, but it's not gonna be visible from the front. So yeah, this is gonna be the first way that it's down and then we'll stick some aluminum tape on the top. The idea is just that the double-sided tape is gonna hold it in, into place. The aluminum tape is gonna make sure that it doesn't come undone. So here is the plan. I want this thing to be as far back as it can without being visible from the front. So we're gonna test it. We're gonna see if that, if that gives us what we want. That actually might be too far forward. All right, let's see how that looks. Can we see it? Nope. I'm gonna put the strips on the top because I'm pretty confident in how that's set up. I'm gonna center it just a little bit, and this is what these guys are gonna be for. These are going to keep it nice and center so that it doesn't start wiggling, because if it's only got one little piece of tape holding it in place on top, then that will act as like a pivot point where it's sticking down, and then as it's able to move left and right like this, it'll wiggle, which we don't want. First thing I'm gonna do is come over the top and then go straight down on the projector. And that's it. And then one more on the back. What's actually holding it down is the projector lens itself, the, or the projector lens holder. This is the kind of stuff that drives people crazy when they see me do it, because they want me to do more than this. And I'm like, nope, I don't have to. Just so, let me make sure that lays flat. Double-sided tape and aluminum tape. They use it in, ex in like super extreme conditions on furnaces and stuff like that, then I'm down to use it to simply hold down a little demon eye. Last step is going to be sliding this dude over the top and then I'm gonna use a screwdriver, not the drill, to thread these back in. You don't want to cross thread these. This particular projector, I can feel it threading into the hole itself on the projector before I even hit this back part. 
the metal part. So if I did this with a drill, I feel like it'd be so easy to cross thread it. Now, granted, I probably should have checked the output before I put all of these screws back in. I'm just being like egotistically confident right now. Maybe do a better job than me checking just to be safe. Once you're to the point where you're back here, let's see. Boom. Dope. This is gonna turn color first, and then we're gonna get this LED right there. It's gonna fire. So if I change this really quick, so this will take all the way until this whole thing fills up, and then that will become yellow. That's it. Now we're just gonna seal this thing up. <laughs> 